good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back here again with another video. Um, I gotta give a disclaimer for my thoughts and opinions on AEW Double or Nothing. I don't know if you can tell, but I've lost my voice. Uh, I was uh, partying with the homies for uh, Dub's wife. Uh, it was her birthday celebration, so we was on a party boat. That's why we did live stream and react to uh, the pay per view. But uh, I turned up <laughs> and I lost my voice, so if my voice sounds a little bit hoarse. That's just what the that's the reason why I had a good time. Uh, but <clears throat> I did make it a mission to watch it today, and uh, overall, <laughs> it was very long. Pause. Oh, um, it was uh, a long pay per view, but I enjoyed it overall. I'm gonna try to get through this thoughts and opinions. My voice sounds <clears throat> oh so awful. Let me try to take some drinks of water. <clears throat> nope, that didn't work. My voice is shot. It is awful right now. So, uh, but I'm gonna try to get through this because I know you guys want to get my thoughts and opinions on the show. Like I said, I enjoyed it, but let's kind of run through my notes. I was able to take some notes, but there was a lot going on. So I'm going to go through my notes and talk about each match one by one. So let's get started to this MJF versus Warlow. Now, going into this match, there was a lot of speculation that Warlow, uh, not Warlow, MJF was supposedly... Like, he didn't show up for, like, a fan meet and greet. Then he had booked a flight ticket back home, but he never got on a plane. <clears throat> um, and then, I guess, apparently, he was going, like, it, it seemed like he wasn't going to show up for the show. And a lot of people were concerned and worried. Some people were feeling like, oh, is this going to be another Sasha, Naomi situation? I figured it wasn't. <clears throat> I did want to report on it because... Obviously, there were still some more things that we didn't know, so I didn't want to talk about it, but I did see it on Twitter and Instagram and YouTube, uh, but I'm glad that he did show up. I'm glad that he showed up for the simple fact that this was obviously Wardlow's biggest match, and he needed this. So, um, I think it kind of plays into the fact why this was the first match, because I was not expecting this match to be the very first match on the show only because they've been building this up for months this has been a slow build and we all wanted to see Wardlow finally get his hands on MJF so the fact that they built this up it kind of plays into the fact of maybe after he kind of went to get the match over with do the job for uh Wardlow and then kind of dip out that's that's the vibe I got like it I would think this show, this match would be like in the middle of the show, but it seemed like he kind of just wanted to do this match and then dip. So I don't know if that's true. We'll find out what's going on as the weeks uh, go by. Also, MJF healing it up. Easily one of the best heels in the business. Had on a Ric Flair type robe, getting a lot of good heel heat. Then you also have Wardlow kind of getting the Goldberg type, type entrance like he's definitely like getting giving like Goldberg vibes the way he walks he's been walking to the arena with security he's handcuffed they're giving him the Goldberg treatment um hopefully they are able to continue his momentum because I think his momentum really started going um since he started feuding with MJF because MJF is so much of a good heel. You want to see him get his ass beat. So they definitely was giving off some Goldberg vibes here. During the match, of course, MJF being a, a chicken shit heel, tried to fake a, uh, a knee injury after the roll up. But of course, as he's doing that, crowd's chanting BS because they know it's BS. And he thinks that the refs and Wardlow's not watching him, but he tries to pull the old, pulling out the his uh, AEW ring, his tights, pulls it out, and he's about to put it on. The ref sees it, pulls it off his finger, and from there is pretty much Wardlow just power bombing him into oblivion, and the crowd loves it. I was expecting more wrestling match, but nah, it was just power bombs after power bomb after power bomb, and you know what? It worked. Because the crowd was hot, 
The crowd was popping. They were loving it. I was enjoying it. And Wardlow got the win. One, two, three. And, of course, they sold it as, uh, you know, they had to stretch him off. Uh, they had to stretch MJF off on the stretcher. After all the power bubbles he received, crowd chanting, you deserve it. It was awesome. And he got a, uh, Warlord got a standing ovation up the ramp. And that was the end of the first match. It was kind of straight to the point. I was expecting more because they've been building this for quite some time. But I don't know what type of backstage issues are going on with MJF and Tony Khan. So maybe that played into the fact he just wanted to do the match, put over Warlord and dip. So I don't know. What they're going to do with MJF. We will see. He is a very top tier heel and talent in the company. So I don't know what they're going to do. But overall, it was straight to the point. I enjoyed the segment for what it was. And now we will see what they do with Wardlow now. Because now you got to put him with against another opponent that's really going to continue to keep his momentum going. So that was cool. Enjoyed that. Next match was the Young Bucks versus the Hardys, man. And uh, it was cool to see the, the Hardys go out there. Just see them in a tag team match all these years later. So against a very good, very known tag team to the Young Bucks. I was excited for this match. Nice second match to follow up what we just uh, watched. Another cool spot in this match. Very cool. Matt Jackson is laying on the steel steps, like just prone to steel steps and propped up. He's laying on top of them. You already know Jeff is about to do Jeff things. Jeff goes to the top row, hits a swan time bomb onto Matt Jackson on the steel steps. Six spot. Jeff, the fact that he's still doing this at the age that he is doing this at is fucking insane. Love that spot. And ultimately, the, the Hardy Boys end up getting the win there. I enjoyed that match. It was fun. It was cool. I enjoyed seeing the Hardys. I, I love watching the Young Buck match, even though sometimes it can get repetitive with the super kicks. But I did like what they did here. This is cool. Pretty cool spots. Let's get on to the next one. Anna J versus J. Now, this match, I for me, it kind of, you know, the energy kind of dipped out just a little bit. But... It, it got back up with uh, a surprise return. So, well, not a surprise return, a surprise debut. Jay was looking pretty dominant at the beginning of this match. I kind of figured Jay was going to win, but Jay was looking very dominant as expected. Uh, Anna Jay started to get some offense uh, during, uh, during like the middle of the back match. And then all of a sudden, some chaos starts ensuing during, during ringside. And Stokely, I want to say, I, I believe he was in NXT. He was like a manager, somewhat like a, he had a manager role in NXT. He appeared now, uh, uh, comes down the ramp. I guess he's going to be managing or assisting uh, uh, Jade going forward. I could be wrong there. Jade ends up winning a from with a top rope. I want to say it's like a top rope. It's our finisher. Uh... Something is I don't know I don't remember the name of it, but she hit it off the top rope. It looked cool. It looked brutal. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about because you know I'm not too familiar with all their moves yet. But she hits like this top rope move, fucking brutal. Wins it, pins uh, Anna J one two three. Then uh, she's about to you know heal it up with uh, with her baddies uh, click or whatever. She's about to go put in some work on Anna J some more, go rogue. And then, uh, I believe somebody else, I forgot her name. Like I said, pay-per-view was on. I forgot her name. Uh, comes out to assist. And this was probably the highlight of this, this whole little exchange, whole segment. You hear, like, you, you hear some music. You see Athena pop up on the graph. And, you know, a.k.a. Ember Moon. And she makes an AEW debut. And they all stand in the ring. Crowd goes pretty crazy. I was pretty shocked to see it. It was cool to see her back in a wrestling ring. She's going by Athena, not Ember Moon anymore. And I am interested to see what they do with her. Uh, the women's division could definitely use her for sure. And I'm looking forward to her and uh, Jade actually having a real good match at some point down the road so i'm interested to see what they do with that so that was i think that's probably the takeaway from this whole match it's more so 
Athena coming out and becoming all elite. So I think that's the most, that's the takeaway from this match. Now, at this point, I have to say, as I'm watching the show, the Death Triangle versus the House of Black was easily my favorite match up to this point. This match was so goddamn good. I don't really know too much about the feud. And guess what? I didn't care because it was that fucking good. This match was must watch. Oh my God. At this point, I was like, okay, now we ramping it up. Match started with a very quick pace. Ray started sitting in the ring cross leg like uh, a Malachi Black. Malachi Black started doing the same thing. They started going at it. Buddy and Penta in the ring, in the ring action uh, was fast paced as well. And then uh, Pac and Brody King had a nice little exchange too. So everybody had their exchange one-on-one -on -one within the match. Very cool, very, uh, very enjoyable. Then all three, I mean all six competitors get in the ring, they say fuck it, they start brawling. It's chaos ensuing, I loved it. Um, Julia, then I, I'm, I'm skipping towards it, it's towards the end, because there's so much shit that went on in this match. So, Pac decides to hit, uh, Alistair, uh, I keep saying, I was about to say Alistair Black, uh, decides to hit Malachi Black with a low blow, said fuck it, I don't give a damn, goes to the top rope, about to hit his finisher, lights go out, Julia uh, Hart sprays Black Mist in Pac's eyes, and ultimately allows uh, um, Malachi Black to get the win, um, and I put in my notes, best match so far, up to this point, that match was fun, if you get a chance, just go watch that, If, like I said, it, Matches like these, it's hard for me to take notes because there's so much going on and I wish I could have watched this live with you guys. Maybe I'll probably have my voice. But, um, <coughs> damn, bro, I sound like a smoker, bro. It's fucking awful. <laughs> uh, but it, ultimately, this was this was cool, man. This was great. And I was like, okay, show is definitely starting to pick up. So, we have the men's finals uh, for the Owen Hart uh, tournament. Adam Cole versus Samoa Joe. Uh, crowd was chanting Owen's name at the beginning of the match. I expected the match to be uh, pretty good. Uh, I didn't know if it was going to be able to top what we just saw uh, previously, but I expected it to be decent, which it was. Didn't really take too many notes on this one. Just the focus was Adam was working over uh, Samoa Joe's elbow. Then, uh, of course, uh, one of Adam Adam's guys tries to interfere in the match. Ultimately, I guess you could say it kind of cost Samoa Joe in losing in losing this match or whatnot. As uh, Adam Cole ends up getting the win. So when Adam Cole won, I knew for a fact that Britt Baker was going to win the woman's side because it doesn't make sense. If Adam Cole wins the men's side, Britt Baker is going to win the women's side. And that's kind of what happened on the follow-up match. Britt Baker versus Ruby Soho for the Hearts Women Tournament, uh, women's side of the tournament. And um, the crowd was actually split. People were chanting Ruby. People were chanting Britt Baker for her match. It was a, it was a good atmosphere. Both matches had good atmosphere, but I feel like the women's match had a lot more, like, I guess you could say crowd involvement more than I was expecting. But definitely they were, you know, the crowd was still had energy. They were still invested. And um, she ended up winning with a counter roll-up. Ruby Rose, uh, Ruby Soho hit her with a, with a roll-up. And then uh, Britt Baker hit her with a counter roll-up for the one, two, three. And that was it. And what was surprising about it is... Britt Baker's a heel, but she kind of came off as a, a face here. She gave uh, Ruby Soho a hand to, you know, pick her up, you know, get her up and, you know, like a hand of good sportsmanship, which I thought was pretty cool. I was not expecting it, but it was pretty cool. And I think it plays into the fact of the tournament. I'm guessing that's why. I don't know. Granted, Adam Cole was trying to heal. I mean, she in his match and she, and, you know, Britt Baker wasn't trying to cheat in her. So don't know, but. I like the sportsmanship in that in that particular moment. <clears throat> and then they go up the ramp. Um, and they, you know, they announce, you know, they, you know, they give them their respective like uh, championship belts as like prizes and their names will be in engraved on the trophy. And the belts look beautiful, bro. They look so goddamn beautiful. 
And these are belts that they not defend. They just keep as, you know, trophies that they won the respective tournaments. Uh, and I thought it was cool. Uh, this was this was awesome to see. And they uh, they did the Owen Hart tournament justice, bro. I think they did it. They handled it with care and class. And I enjoyed it. Definitely enjoyed it. Um, it was cool. It was, it was definitely, definitely cool. You could see they took it seriously. And that's what I, I want to see in wrestling tournaments. The seriousness of it. Don't have a tournament if you don't take it seriously. Like, I like that. And I thought that was pretty cool. So, uh, definitely kudos to them getting the dub here. And uh, we'll see what they do. How they play up the fact that they both won the tournament. You know what I'm saying? So, how they're going to... How they're gonna play up the fact of they both winning going in uh going forward in the weeks moving forward all right ethan page scorpion uh scorpio sky uh and page van Zant, which i didn't know was in aew now apparently or you know made a, a debut in aew did not know that versus tay Kantan uh what's her name Kantani? Kantani? I think that's how you say it. I'm probably mispronouncing it. Tay Kantani, Sammy, Sammy Guevara, and Frankie uh, Kazarian. Now, I know recently Sammy and Tay, they, I guess they've embraced the hate. They have they finally started to go heel because I guess people got tired of their fucking shoving down their relationships down in people's throats. So people started legit booing them when they were faces. So you're like, no, fuck it. We're just going to go heal now <laughs> and embrace it. So it kind of works. Uh, so I think that was pretty cool that they, um, they decided to embrace the hate there. Um, I think the story is Sammy's so hung up on his girl that he does anything to like appease her and uh, and uh, impress her. And uh, JR was mentioning that on commentary. And that's what kind of was helping. It was kind of their downfall in this match because he would uh Sammy wouldn't even be worried about the 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 like tagging in uh Frankie Kazarian because he's so busy trying to impress his girl or whatnot. And it was causing some confusion to the point where Frankie left them high and dry when it was like a three on one situation. It was like a mix mix women uh mixed tag match or whatever. Um but then Frankie comes back into the match. Uh he tags himself in to try to, you know, get the pin victory. And then there's some confusion there when he tags himself in uh, with Sammy and Tay Con uh, Tay Conti. I'm 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 sure I'm mispronouncing it. And then Sammy uh, Sammy ends up kicking his girlfriend's head smooth off her shoulders, bro. That was a bit a beautiful super kick out of nowhere. Crowd saying you effed up. Uh, ultimately, they end up losing. <laughs> I mean, the match was what it was. I know, you know, they're trying to hype up Paige Van Zandt, uh, but I mean, what she did in the ring was okay. It wasn't nothing like just awe-inspiring, but it was cool. She was serviceable, but I mean, even when she came out, the crowd was kind of just like, uh, you know, gave her a lukewarm uh, welcome. So I don't know, but this was a low point of the show for me to get into the next match, Kyle versus uh, Darby Allen or whatnot. So early in the match, Darby gets busted open in, in the lip um because Kyle O'Reilly he's very stiff he they show a replay a stiff legit knee to the face busted him open early in the match uh Darby Allen does some type of dive under I want to say is like he tried to dive under I don't know if it was over or under the, the bottom ropes but it looked like he ended up landing on his head and neck region trying to uh, dive at Kyle O'Reilly very very brutal uh, I mentioned in my notes this is a very hard hitting match which it was um, ultimately Kyle O'Reilly wins with multiple just kicks to the chest just I mean he's launching them and Darby Allen's just sitting up taking it like Hey, keep keep coming at me until Colorado jumps from the top rope with a knee to the side and the back off the top rope. Beautiful. Colorado, very stiff wrestler. Uh, it was an enjoyable match. The Darby Allen Colorado match, I definitely would have preferred that have been on the show, but I understand that they, you know, they had to promote, you know, the uh, TNT championship with Scorpio Sky. So I get that. I understand that. I just probably would have preferred this match over the, uh, the last previous match. But yeah, it is what it is. All right, so we get to the women's AEW championship match. At this point, fatigue is definitely setting in because <laughs> it's a long show. Thunder Rosa versus Serena Deeb. Um, 
but they were showing some good chain wrestling at the beginning the crowd was starting to chant this is wrestling they were really showing out like just their wrestling ability and i enjoyed the way they started off the match um didn't really take too much notes here uh it was cool it was it was serviceable in my opinion i think it was a you know a solid women's championship match and i i predicted that uh serena d wasn't gonna win thunder rosa uh, ends up retaining they're still trying to build her up um and build up her title reign and the crowd is still heavily behind her but overall solid women's championship match now this next match i <clears throat> i posted on twitter this was just insane me watching this there's no way i could take notes i i was wasn't taking as much of those but prior to and i knew i was in for something when justin roberts uh started off the announcement of the match by saying shit is about to hit the fan i died laughing easily the best moment of the goddamn show it was great anarchy in arena the name is appropriate because it was just chaos the jericho appreciation society Versus John Moxley, Brian Danielson, Santa Ortiz, Eddie Kingston. Santana, I said Santa. Santana Ortiz, Eddie Kingston. It was just a brawl. It was just a brawl. Jericho Appreciation Society enters down the ramp, in the ring. Everybody else enters through the crowd. And for the first few minutes of the actual match, John Moxley's theme song is just playing throughout the entire brawl. It's just camera cuts just brawling people getting busted open fighting in the crowd fighting in the technical area fighting in the audio area it, it I, I just i i i had nothing to say but this was great i wish i could have watched this with you live i would have been dying this was so this brought energy back into me the placement of this match was actually pretty good because at this point I started to feel like I was kind of losing energy because I was seeing some pretty good wrestling and then, you know, everything else was like, it was cool, but it was just, I was getting tired. This brought life back into me and it brought life into that whole arena. It was just chaos. Everybody was bleeding except for like Jericho, damn near. It was just blood. I, I, I loved it. I loved it. I put in my notes, I need K what I'm watching. But I ha I'm having fun. Jericho smashes the soundboard that I guess supposedly kept playing John Moxley music. So he messes that up. So the music stops. Um, I put also on my notes. I can't take notes. This is just chaos. Everyone's busted open. Eddie Kingston made it his mission to let it be known he was going to kill somebody. You got Santana and Ortiz jumping off this huge high ladder crashing down on two members of the Jericho Appreciation Society down below six spot you got violence on an elevator <laughs> don't know what's going on violence in the concession stand area Eddie Kingston comes down with a canister of gasoline Jericho has Dan uh, Daniel Bryan has Jericho in the LaBelle lock and Daniel Bryan was getting massive yes chance it was giving me shades of the yes movement it was great Oh, uh, Brian Daniels on my grad, y'all. He comes down there, gas canister. He starts pouring it on Jericho, on, uh, Jericho while he's in the LaBelle lock. Wow. He's getting gas on him, too, bro. He's like, bro, what the, what the fuck are you doing? So they start brawling. And then that's when everything falls apart. Jericho gets a chair, starts beating the crap out of him. Uh, there was, at one point, there was a fucking table set up with barbed wire. They destroyed the top turnbuckle rope, like the whole turnbuckle of the top turn. Uh, John Moxley destroyed that in the ring. He ends up, they end up, I think Jake Hager ends up pushing John Moxley onto a table of, there's a table set outside the ring. And then there's a, a, like a, a plywood set up with barbed wire that he brought out, that John Moxley brought out. He ends up falling on that. He's out of the match. And then they just, you know, Brian Anderson tries to bend him off as much as he can, uh, but he's not able to. Uh, I believe Eddie Kingston gets uh, hit with uh, Jericho's Judas effect or something like that, I want to say. Like a little back elbow. Uh, he gets hit with that. He's out. And then Bryce is trying to defend off Hager and um, 
uh, Jericho, but ultimately he's not. The number of games get the best of him. Jericho hits the the, the walls, has the walls applied to Bryce uh, Danielson, but then he puts it into like a half crit Boston grab or something like that. And then Jake Hager has the top rope tied on his neck while he's in that submission and he doesn't tap he passes out as expected and the match ends with the jericho appreciation society winning honestly this was fucking fun this was fun i i can't i it reminded me so much of the attitude here and just chaos and brutality and it was fun it's an i wouldn't even call that a match it was just fun that was fun i in the, that was the most enjoyable part the best match of the night was the trios match. That was the best match. This was the, easily the best part, segment, whatever you want to call it. Because I can't call it a match. It was just fun. So, definitely, just go check that out by yourself. You'll, you'll enjoy it. All right. Um, At this point, I'm just full of energy. Just hyped. Uh, we got the AEW World Tag Team Championship match. Was not expecting it to be able to follow the hype of what we just saw, but they showed they put on a pretty good tag team match. Keith Lee uh, with Swerve uh, Strickland versus Jungle Boy Luchasaurus versus Powerhouse Hobbs and uh, Ricky Starks. Uh, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus uh, retained. It was a it was it was a nice nice tag team match with three teams it was enjoyable uh, i think the most memorable spot for me was seeing uh swerve doing like this backflip he goes to the top rope does a backflip off of keith lee's chest to everyone outside on the floor fantastic keith lee is just for someone that big he should not be moving the fa that fast and, and being that agile it, he's just fantastic the crowd was definitely behind them a lot uh keith lee and <clears throat> and uh swerve swerve strickland uh, but ultimately they end up giving the uh the win to luchasaurus and uh jungle boy uh crowd still kind of behind them as well We're interested to see what they do with them going forward and we get to the main event and i have to talk about this one only because in my personal opinion, some may disagree with me. I think this main event was probably one of the weaker ones from Adam Page. And what I mean by that, his title, this title defense was probably one of the weaker ones only because of how it it, it, it felt like it should have been. This is CM Punk versus Adam Page. This should have been, it should have felt bigger, but maybe that's because you know, you've had 12 other matches, so it's kind of hard to <clears throat> really bring all that energy at the end of the show like that. I just felt like it should have felt bigger, but it didn't. Was it enjoyable? Yes, it was. But uh, it just it didn't really hit all the notes I was expecting it to. But we're going to get into it. So, I will say this. The crowd did have energy when they came out. crowd was split when the match started. Um... It, it kind of died down towards, you know, towards the middle part. But it would pick back up here and there when one person would gain more offense. You heard the CM Punk chants and you heard the Adam Page chants. CM Punk tries to hit the buckshot lariat. He definitely messes it up. Uh, doesn't really land it properly. Crowd boos him. Um, but he pays for it in the end. He, didn't, he wasn't able <clears throat> to actually hit it. But Adam uh, Page was able to hit the GTS. And when he hits the GTS, CM Punk kicks out. Crowd going. Crowd, I would say towards the end, the crowd really started ramping up. Um, and then there was a situation where I want to say CM Punk uh, was trying to hit the GTS on Adam Page again. Ends up swinging him. And it hits the ref. Of course, the ref gets knocked out for an obscene amount of time. At that point... <clears throat> The championship is in the ring because they, I, I want to say, Adam Page had threw him over the timekeeper's area where the belt was at. <clears throat> and uh, the belt somehow ended up getting back into the ring or whatever, but it was in the corner. So I'm like, uh, yeah, they're going to use this at some point. So the belt's in the corner. The ref is down. CM Punk is down. Um, Adam Page is up. He goes, picks up the belt. And I'm like, is he going to turn heel here? I was like, is he going to do this? Is this the moment 
that he's going to say fuck it but he didn't he wanted to win legit so he puts it down goes for the buckshot lariat gets countered into the gts and the ref comes to right at that precise moment one two three and cm punk is your new aew world heavyweight champion and i was thoroughly surprised because i didn't think they were going to actually pull the trigger but they pulled the trigger i wasn't expecting that i thought maybe they were going to give adam a, a little bit longer of a run but they pulled the trigger i was surprised and you can tell cm punk seemed very emotional like he seemed super emotional like when he won it you know you could tell he was very very excited and happy about that but i do believe this is not over the way they set up the story of adam really conflicted on doing that because if he would have hit him with the title he would have won but he didn't cheat and i think maybe that's a way that you can turn uh adam into a heel because it's like bro if i would have cheated I would have won that match. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he turns heel from there. I do believe they will have another match. And I, I have a feeling maybe their next match, the rematch will be better. Because this match was okay. I think this match was fine. I think if you have this match on a show with less matches, I think this would be even better. Because I just think the crowd would be consistently more energetic in a sense. And the people at home would probably have more energy to watch it considering what we just saw. And I think that's the biggest thing for me when it comes to this overall show. If I, I'm going to give my rating on this, um, <clears throat> I'm going to give this a 7.5 out of 10. It would be higher if there was less matches. There was All the matches on this card were serviceable. I don't think... I, don't, I couldn't really single out a match that was just like oh this is god awful it was every match on there was like serviceable doable uh i wouldn't re-watch every match here on this show but it was definitely serviceable um but yeah that's that's the real reason why even though i'm watching the adam uh even though i was i was at, happy to see adam versus cm punk i was kind of already in the mode like whoo i'm ready to kind of get this over with overall I did enjoy the show. This was fun. This was great. AEW, they knocked it out of part for the most part with this one. I just, the only gripe I have is I wish they would have sh taken off some of the matches on this card. And I think the, the main event could have put benefited me personally. It probably would have benefited even better because it would, you know, I, we would have gotten to the main event sooner. And I don't know. It just, it would have, I would have more energy potentially. So. But comment down below. Let me know. Did you guys enjoy um, Double or Nothing this year? What was your favorite match? What was your least favorite match? Or were you guys happy with CM Punk becoming the new AEW World Champion? Or were you guys kind of disappointed in that? And where do you guys see the next potential feud for CM Punk? Will he have a rematch with Adam Page, man? And also let me know if you feel like the show was a little bit too long or it was just the right amount of length. But I uh, appreciate all love and support. I'm sorry that my voice sound like I've been chain smoking <laughs> for the past <laughs> 10 years of my life or some shit. Like I'm a chronic smoker. I'm sorry. I'm definitely not. It's just my voice is definitely gone from yesterday's activities. I'm just trying to take some medicine so I can get back to normal. But I appreciate all love and support, Road to 90K. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all next one. Peace.